Hey, what's up? Welcome back. Patrick here from All Things Mathematics and moving on to the next test question. Another thinking kind of question here. So we have to determine the coordinates of the point or the points. There may be multiple ones on this function here at which the tangent is going to be perpendicular to this line 1 half x plus 6. So first thing I'm going to do is I am going to draw a quick visual. So let's say that um, this function f of x looks like this. I know it may look differently. Uh, again, I'm just doing a rough drawing so you could see what is happening from a high level before we go into the details. So let's say that this function, this cubic function, looks like this. And what we have to do is we have to find coordinates, right? So what we're looking for is points x and y on this function where the tangent, right? Let's say the tangent looks like this, where this red tangent is going to be perpendicular to this line. So this line here, if we draw it in green, let's say that it looks like this. Right, so this red tangent has to be perpendicular or have a 90 degree angle in between with this line right here, y equals 1 half x plus 6. Right, so we're looking for the coordinates on this function f of x where the tangent, this red line, is going to be perpendicular to this green line like that. Now, how do the slopes of two perpendicular lines relate? Well, if we know that the slope of this green line is one half, well, what does that mean that the slope of the tangent is going to be? Well, it's going to be the negative reciprocal of that, which is going to be negative two, right? The negative reciprocal of one over two is negative two over one, which is just negative two. And so we're trying to find the coordinates on this function where the slope of the tangent is going to be negative 2. So another way that this word problem could have been written as is determine the coordinates of the points on the graph f of x uh, at which the tangent has a slope of negative 2, right? So the tangent being perpendicular to the line y equals 1 half x plus 6, same thing as saying at which the tangent has a slope of negative 2. It could have also been worded like that. There was just this extra step there to test your understanding of what is going on, and it's why I wanted to draw this visual first to show you from a high level what's going on, right? So we're just trying to find when is the slope of the tangent on this function here going to be negative 2. And so what we're doing here is we're going to be going backwards, right, than what we've usually been doing with the questions on this test beforehand. With the questions before, we were given specific points, right, and we had to find the slope of the tangent at those points. Here we're given the slope of the tangent, and we're going to have to find the points where that slope is going to be happening. And then to do that, we have to use the difference quotient, and I've gone through examples like this and the lecture videos. Again, I'm assuming you've watched those before doing the test. If you haven't, make sure that you watch those as well because I go through different scenarios there too, right? With different kinds of functions. This is a polynomial function, but you may get a function where it's going to be a rational function or a square root function, right? You have to be able to adapt with this kind of question to whatever they're going to give you. Okay, and so we basically have to find the general expression for the slope of the tangent using the difference quotient here that we've been using throughout the unit. And then once we have that general expression, right, for the slope of the tangent, we have to find the a values where it's going to equal negative 2. Then we would be solving for those a values. So let's get that general expression first. So we'll have the limit as h approaches 0 plugging in a plus h into the function. So let's split this up with uh, square brackets. I think the algebra in this one's going to be pretty hectic because we have a cubic function, right? 
this is all going to have to get expanded. This is squared minus 11 times a plus h uh, minus, and then we will have this bracket here. So that's going to be a cubed minus 3a squared minus 11a like that. And this here is going to be all over H. Quick little intermission here. I want to mention a few things and we'll get right back into the video. Number one, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can go to the description box and there's a link that will take you to my website, allthingsmathematics.com. And there you can find all of the videos organized by chapter, by section, and there's also tests that you could try at the end of each unit. Number two, if you feel like you need tutoring at any point, I'm tutoring students seven days a week over Zoom, both high school and university students, one-on-one -on -one and in groups. My contact details are on the website. You could text me and we can book a session. And finally, if you feel like you're getting any value from this video, if you could please like the video and subscribe to the channel, hit me up on all my socials. It does help me out a lot. If you feel like any of your friends can benefit, feel free to forward the website to them as well. And back to the video, we go. So now to do this expansion, what's gonna happen here, the limit as h approaches zero, the worst part is gonna be this a plus h to the power of three, right? Cause there's gonna be like three of these brackets right here, the a plus h brackets. Um, and so what you're gonna wanna do here is foil out two of them, expand two of them. And then once you have two of them, are um, two of them already expanded, then foil in that third one right there. And then you're gonna have minus three, and then you're gonna have two brackets over here, a plus h, a plus h, like that. Here, you could just bring in the negative 11 right away. That's gonna be negative 11a minus 11h, like that. And then here, you could bring this negative in uh, to all the expressions. So that would be minus a cubed plus 3a squared plus 11a. And that is still going to be all over H. And so when you do all that expansion, this is what you should end up with all of this stuff in the numerator. I know it's a lot of things here, but uh, what's going to be nice here is a lot of the stuff is going to cancel out. So if you notice the A cubes here will cancel out. Um, also the three A squareds cancel out the 11 A's uh, cancel out. And then I think that is it, right? Yeah, nothing else. So what's gonna be left over? We're gonna have the limit as h approaches zero of three a squared h plus three a h squared plus h cubed minus six a h minus three h squared minus 11 h like that. And that's gonna be all over h. And then if you notice, all of the terms in the numerator, they all contain an h. And that's what should happen because our next step is we have to factor out an h, right? And I've mentioned this in the lecture videos that if you get to this point and there's some kind of term that doesn't have an h, like let's say there was a, I don't know, 6a floating around or something like that, then you know something is off because then we can't factor out an H to cancel out with this H in the denominator, right? So all the terms you are left with in the numerator after simplifying all the like terms, um, they all should contain an H, at least when you're dealing with uh, polynomials here. Uh, so then we could factor out an H and the reason why we want to factor out because now it could cancel. Right, and now what would happen is we could plug in an h value of zero finally, because we don't have that h in the denominator anymore. So all of the uh, expressions that contain an h would go to zero. So you'd have like three a squared plus three a times zero plus zero squared minus six a minus three times zero minus 11. Right, so what's that gonna simplify to? that is going to simplify to 3a squared minus 6a minus 11, right? So this, if you remember, gives us the slope of the tangent on our original function f of x at any x value of a, right? That's the general expression, also called the derivative, which we'll be, uh, we'll be working with uh, in the next chapter but this is that general expression. And if you remember, we're trying to find at what a values, what x values is the slope of the tangent going to be negative two, 
right? Or when is it going to be perpendicular to a slope of one half, which is when the slope is going to be negative two. So basically we plug in now negative two here and we got to solve um, for these a values, right? So bring the negative two over and notice we're going to end up with a quadratic equation to solve. And you could throw it in the quadratic formula. I think this actually is going to factor smoothly if I'm not mistaken, right? So what does this factor into? A minus 3a plus 1, like that. So we get an a value of 3 and an a value of negative 1, right? So those are the two x values on that function f of x where the slope of the tangent is going to be negative 2. And then if you wanted to get the corresponding y values, you'd plug in those x values into the original function, right? So if you take f of 3, um, this would be what, 27 minus 27 minus 11 times 3, so we'd actually end up with negative 33. And then uh, plugging in negative 1, we'd end up with what, negative 1 minus 3, which is negative 4 plus 11. Uh, so that would give us 7, right? So the two coordinates are 3 and negative 33 and negative 1 and 7, right? So there's actually two coordinates on this function right here where the tangent is going to have a slope of negative 2 or where the tangent is going to be perpendicular to that line in the question that we were given that had a slope of 1 half right? So those are the two solutions right there. So we had to get this general expression for the slope of the tangent of this particular function and then find out at what a values is it going to be negative two and that's a wrap for the question. And that's a wrap for the video. Hopefully you enjoyed that. If you want to see more videos like this, please go to my website, allthingsmathematics.com. Over there, all of the videos are organized by chapter, by section. If you feel like you need tutoring at any point, you could also hit me up. My contact details are on the website. Enjoy your day and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.